two. Hold on. Oh my god. <laughs> I've got one thing to say. Yes. Penis. What's going on, ladies and gents? Dangerous here, bringing you guys today something that we've literally haven't done in forever. Like, sorry, we've been busy. <laughs> it's alright. We took a little break from it. We had our full operator week, but we are back with our operator ideas with Thunder Spear. What's going on, Thunder? Not a whole lot. Really excited. Well, we just started school, so yeah, eh. <laughs> we're all mildly exhausted, but it's all good. So, um, just to get the formalities out of the way, this is a 100% fan-made ideas. These will probably never make it in the game. We are 100% aware of that. We know that the next know. operators are the Japanese. Actually, we made a video talking about what we'd like to see or Thunder's ideas for the Japanese SAT. So make sure you guys go check that out or watch the whole playlist of these. It's really fun. Um, these are all made up by Thunder. Uh, so thank you, Thunder, and your cocaine-laced imagination. Uh, for, uh, Alrighty then. <laughs> A uh, uh, little bit of credit goes to Gidry on some of these. He, I, I didn't do this alone. And I guess I don't have to talk about the vote anymore because it's Operator Week's long time over. Yeah. But anyways, once again, <laughs> thank you guys so much for um, the continued support on the channel. We greatly appreciate it. Without further ado, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to Thunder and take it away. All right. So today we are covering the Indian NSG. And this, this one hosts probably my favorite Operator out of all the ones I've come up with. This guy is... In my, in my opinion, my best idea in the whole list. So, moving on, we have the weapons, which are the Ashani Pistol, the IMI Negev Light Machine Gun, the Franke Spaz-15 Shotgun, the Beretta SC-70-90, and the Chris Vector. Moving on into the operators, we have Vulture with two armor and two speed. And this is the guy I was talking about, how he's the gem of the whole list. Vulture is a jack of all trades, basically. His special ability is somewhat passive, but it is the ability to pick up the equipment of deceased operators, be they friend or foe. This means he can pick up Blitz's Flash Shield, Montagna's Extendable Shield, Pulse's Heartbeat Sensor, Doc's Stim Pistol, and it basically allows him to use whatever is left of that person's gear. If Castle doesn't use any of his barricades and he gets killed, Vulture can then essentially lock the defenders out of the objective while they're securing it. it and... He can also repurpose Capcam's traps, which, when repurposed, they will glow. Gr they'll be green physically, and they'll also have a green laser, or so you can tell when they've been switched. And he can even repurpose Bandit's shock wire, and it will slow and damage them, um, as th as would Bandit for attackers. And Vulture is an attacking operator. He can also repurpose Frost mats if she has any left. So. This guy is not fun to face if he manages to take you out. Next up, we have Tank with 5 armor and .5 speed. Tank is a damage absorber. And while he is equipped with a Damascus DFX2 Imperial suit, look that up, uh, he is still vulnerable to high-powered weapons such as Glaz's rifle as they will straight up kill him with a headshot. That is the only weapon that can do so unless Cal makes it in. Uh, melee attacks will deal significant damage, but they will not kill. Well, essentially, it takes three consecutive ones to kill him straight up if he's on full health. And I should note that he moves the slowest out of all the operators in the game. If any of you have ever been walking through a field of barbed wire, he's basically like that all the time. So this is the guy who's meant to sit there and hold down the objective hell or high water this makes him very uh, this makes him a very poor choice for roaming as pretty much if he's not on the same floor as the objective or if he's a fair distance away the attackers can pretty much set up shop have have like s'mores or something while they wait and then still be able to set up a defensive position and fight so I should note that explosive damage does not drop off, so frag grenades are still perfectly effective against him. Fuses grenades, 
they they are survivable. I should know that it's dropped down. So fuses grenades are survivable if he's standing on one puck. But uh, if two of them land in the same vicinity of hi of him, he's going to die. And he he wields the Negev or the Vector, which one one gives him a fairly good damage at the cost of a slightly lower fire rate, and the Vector gives him high fire rate at the cost of low damage. So take your pick on whatever you want. And Tank is a defender. Next up, we have the probably the one on this list that is 100% guaranteed not going to make it into the game. And this is Sick with one armor and three speed. Sick comes into battle with an attack dog named Bag, which is Hindi for Tiger. And while Bag is, is equipped with a flak vest, which prevents him from sustaining explosive damage, taking any form of damage, such as nitrous or gunfire, will cause him to immediately return to Sick. When Sicked, Bog will sneak out, uh, will seek out oh, and attack the nearest defender in a, in a small area. It's, it's not like the, he'll, he'll scour the entire map. He'll essentially just scour the floor. Er, and he can be used a maximum of twice. Anytime his path is blocked, let's say they, let's say he's encountered a castle barricade and there's no alternate route, it still counts as a use. And when all three commands have been used, used he'll automatically return to sick and he'll just follow him around. The dog, it basically, when it attacks an enemy, it does 10 damage for every second. However, tank is tank's armor is strong enough to withstand it, so he will just throw bog aside and. Bog will return to sick. Next up, we have Shockwave with three armor and one speed. Shockwave uses the Taser Shockwave to neutralize enemies. The Shockwave is basically a large group of tasers in almost kind of like a box, and it runs on close range motion sensors. He carries two of these devices, and each device will neutralize up to one full health attacker. Since he needs them to be more compact, each Shockwave unit it only comes equipped with four tasers, but each taser does about 20 damage, so it, it'll it'll heavily damage them. Um, and uh, these devices are guaranteed hits as soon as they acquire the target, but they have very short range, so you're going to want to set them close to corners or in choke points. Otherwise, they're not going to do make a whole lot. They do make a buzzing sound, so you can detect them as you get close, and the front of the taser is bordered with bright green tape, so you know which side not to stand on. And this makes them obvious to spot from a distance, but they're not the easiest to neutralize at close range. However, they are destroyed with a single shot. Next up, we have Shaman with two armor and two speed. And Shaman comes equipped with a medical kit, which is placed. And this allows the attacking team to go to it and heal themselves for 20 armor points. This can be used only once per person and it only has enough uses for five. Similar to Rook's pack. Should you have taken less than 20 damage, you'll simply just be returned to the normal 100 health with no surplus. And the medical kit takes about as long as using Rook's trauma pack. And Shaman is an attacker. And lastly, we have Sentry with three armor and one speed. Sentry comes equipped with two sentry guns, and these guns have very clear red laser sights, and they'll fire at a relatively slow fire rate. It, they'll deal about 15 damage per shot, and they fire at about 90 rounds per minute. So about so a little around in a little a little under a second. And they auto correct for your they auto correct for their target's path, but they're not guaranteed hits against shield users, so they won't target their arm. They'll aim center mass. Or they might miss fast-moving targets. These guns must be placed on flat surfaces, and they can be moved once they are. They can be moved and relocated once they are placed, and they're destroyed when they take 80 points of damage. And that is all for the Indian NSG Moose. You want to pop back in here and give me your thoughts? I'm here. I'm on time. I'm you and Mike this time perfectly. Honestly, yep. like. It seems the NSG is like the the everyone what you see commenting on every operator video or forum yeah, post. Or these guys, like that. these guys were like the fourth group I made, so I've had these guys for geez, yeah. almost a year now. Like I always at the end of our operator videos when I go over the comment section, it's there should be a guy with a med kit, there should be a guy with an attack dog, 
Now, I want to briefly touch on Tank because I think you missed out something big here. Um, Tank is the one who carries the Chris Vector, and in our ideology, the Chris Vector only came with 20 rounds. But yep, it did have small it, twenty round magazine. But it did have its like stupidly fast RPM of like what would you state it was? I, th I if I remember correctly, it's about a thousand. Yeah, so we had about that, but the damage model is very very small or very very low, I should say. So you won't be like unless you're accurate or going for headshots, you're gonna have a bad time. And of course, tank doesn't have his speaker's advantage well as strong because he's a very slow fat shit. Um, but I definitely like it. I, I, I agreed with Tank to be put in the video, honestly, just because the fact that there's so many goddamn roamers and Nitro Cell users, that it seems people just forget to defend the objective these days. And yeah. it seems like the incentive would be someone like Tanks or someone to actually sit down and protect the goddamn bomb for once. Um, now, I know that we said that um, Sick wouldn't make it in the game. And you have Never. to understand from a standpoint that I know everyone wants to see a dog in Rainbow Six Siege, whether it's an attack dog or a dog if that I sniffs can, out explosives. If I can cut in here really quick. Guys, this was my fourth iteration. I have tried four times to balance this thing out, and I cannot do it. Yeah. I just can't. There is no way to balance a dog in this game. Now, it is difficult. Now, the only you have to also think from a person that if people are too focused on the dog, like, oh, what do you mean, Moose? The dog isn't powerful at all. It has three uses. Um, you know, it has two a uses, actually. Oh, you said two? I thought you said three. My bad. So it has, like, two uses, stuff like that. Well, you see, if, you know, the user is smart, Sick could probably be one of the most dominating characters in the game just based off the fact that people, once the dog goes in first, you pretty much give away who is ever in that room. Now, of course, you don't want to waste sick, so that's why you save it for when you're near the objective, when you know the concentration of enemies will be. Now, before, actually, Thunder didn't tell me that he had uses, so my opinion has changed a little bit on this character. He's not as broken, because Thunder forgot to tell us earlier that he had, like, certain uses. I thought the dog was unlimited. Way to go, Thunder. Anyways. <laughs> hey, sorry. No, it's fine, it's fine. Um, so, when you have a character that sends in an attack dog, and it gets almost a free kill, or it causes disruption, or it causes an issue, you leave an opening for this person, for the, you know, for the character sick himself, you the player, especially being uh, a max speed, he's max speed, right? I didn't hear that wrong. He's yep, max speed, max one speed, armor. yep. You know, and he's got that peekers advantage. He can flank. He can absolutely dominate, and it's pretty much free kills for anyone that's in that 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 dog has gone to attack. You know that someone might be in there. You know that that dog's going to attack someone. You can save the dog's uses for you when you see someone. You can pretty much exploit to the point where that person is really going to die because they have to focus on the dog. If they don't focus on the dog, they're going to die. If they don't focus on you, the dog still will kill them. It's still an issue, unless the dog immediately dies as soon as you do, which would look funny, but hey, that could obviously balance like that. It, it's well, still an issue. The, as soon as you die, a, a bog will return to you, and it'll, and he'll literally just sit down next to your body. Yeah. He'll just sit there. Like, you know, stuff just like that. Just stops immediately. Yeah. Like, you have, like, you have to remember that you don't, like, the defender won't have this window of opportunity to defend himself all that well. And just the pure aggression that you can use with the one, you know, speed operator or something like that. Or just, just to, whatever even speed operator this person is, just to have, if, if you just pretty much corner those defenders, they're not going to be able to defend themselves. Um, now, there are certain rooms on maps that might not be too bad for this. But a lot of maps and locations do suffer from this issue. It's not hard to flink around. It's not hard to open up a new path. You know, once you, once that defender can't defend himself, you're pretty much giving him free. It's like fighting Blackbeard almost. Blackbeard, if he's head glitching, you can't really do much if you're at distance. You can't break his shield. You can't throw nitrous on him. It won't make it. You know, there's tons of issues that get in the way. And that Blackbeard's not going to move up because he knows he's got the advantage. What What's the point of giving away your god mode if... You don't have to, essentially, like that. So, unless the dog... Like, I liked the idea more now with the whole... It has limited uses. But it, it, it seems unfair when an AI unit can get kills for you. It, it almost... Rem it's almost like you... It's almost like you have hacks. It's almost like, technically, if someone's not paying attention... Or a new player isn't that well... Or even sometimes advanced players can get flanked. If you're a little healthy and you just get bitten once, you're out. Or stuff like that, you know... It takes away the element of Rainbow Six Siege that put it from gun to gun, skill base to skill base, 
and you really had to fight it out and duke each other out and fight against these operators' abilities. Obviously, Blackbeard doesn't involve in that because he's a head glitching dickhead and clearly needs to be nerfed. But anyways, um, <laughs> but it's yeah, just stuff like seriously, that. Seriously, that... at the very least, like drop it down to like three shots break the shield because you don't need like more than that. Oh, well, not three shots because then the shield's useless. It's just hard to nerf someone like Whatever. Blackbeard. Anyways, moving on. I don't even think at this point it should be yeah. in the game. He's just. That's, his topic's not Blackbird. The topic is just an attack dog itself and the idea of just having an AI unit that does the killing for you. Now you can say, well, you know, grenades, they can be countered. A dog, yeah, it can be shot, but at the same time, if there's stuff going on, you send a dog in. There's a lot of situations where this dog is better. Like, if you have another person with you, they can cause distraction to get the defender's attention. Boom, dog's in there and attacks someone. You're in there following up the dog, you know what I mean? Um, if the cards are right, this character can be absolutely devastating, and it can cause a lot of issue. You know, that dog can flank, take out people from the rear. Once you cause a commotion, you storm in. Someone else storms in. It, it, it adds another element to the game that is out of the player that is, you know, that is dealing with its control, like Blackbeard's face shield. I keep referencing that because stuff like that can be an issue. Now, if they do it right, if they do it right, an attack dog could work. Like, I do like the only two uses. I do like that. Don't get me wrong, but it is still hard when an AI unit itself just attacks you. Like with Twitch, you have to control a drone. With a dog, you just let off the leash and does whatever it's want. It could be useful or it could be a retard and spam all of its uses and fail. You know, but if you're a smart player, you're, you know, you're really going to be very, very rewarded for having something that almost assists you in killing. That's pretty much my issue with bringing an AI, you know, control bot things. Yeah. Especially with... And we all know how Ubisoft works anyways. If an operator was like that were to come in, a one speed, no, uh, not one speed, max speed one armor operators always have some of the best guns. IQ's machine gun's really good. Her, her AUG and her SG-5F, they're good. Ash's guns are amazing. Capital's guns are good. You know, it, 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 it's a common trend. It's how Ubisoft balances their shit. So, sorry. I went a little bit of a tangent there, you know. You get what I mean? It's just difficult. It was a beneficial tangent. You know, like, I, if they did it right, I wouldn't mind it. But from Ubisoft, they're just like, yeah, we'll put a guy with a face shield in the game. You know, they, they, they've they definitely got their own agenda to, to account for. So, I don't know. I like, like I said, he didn't tell us thoroughly about them having, uh, the dog having specific uses, which is fine. Nothing gets you thunder. But it's just like, it, I'm, a, I'm more comfortable with it having, like, two uses. But the person's really good. It's still going to be a big issue. I don't know. That's what I think yeah. at least. So. Really, really quick, another thing. In your opinion, did Vulture kind of make up for Sick being kind of not being able to come in? Also, what, what, sorry, I just totally cut you off for a second here. What is that dog going to do when someone repels? I just want everyone to think about their second. Is that guy going to, like, put the dog on his back? You know, is he going to be able he to go He holds the there? dog. He cannot, he cannot attack when he's repelling because he's he has hanging to hold the, dog. the dog. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean,. You got, like, because there was an issue in Call of Duty Ghosts where the attack dog, you, what you do is you climb up a ladder, and the dog couldn't climb up the ladder, so it'd run through the building, clear out anyone who's in there, you get free kills, and you didn't have to do a thing. So there's stuff like that, obviously, bouncing out. You can just tell the dog to go attack something. It's it's very difficult to balance out yeah. another AI, especially in a game where it's, you're dead, you're dead. If the game wasn't, you're dead, you're dead, okay, fine, whatever. But, like, Siege is a punishing game. One wrong move, and it's over. You know what I mean? Um, yep. Anyway, so yeah. But yeah, I like Vulture. Picking up other people's gadgets really does help. The only issue is, is like, if if the person's dead, like, if Vulture dies, you've lost someone that wasn't useful. Like, if Vulture dies, you've lost someone who could have been useful off the start. But if no one important dies, like, if I, like, if someone, say, if Ash yeah, dies and she used all her ordnance, what are you going to do? I mean, you don't yeah, pick that, up the kill, yeah, obviously, you got to pay attention. Of... Yeah, but that's like, kind of the thing is this guy is, like, your second chance. So if you get spawn peaked, then Vulture can take this guy out, and let's say they got your Thermite, like, right yeah. off spawn. He can then take Thermite's Brimstones, and now when he walks up to a wall, he can hit RB, and he can set up a Brimstone. It, ta I, it takes, like, a second I, longer. I do, you're right. I do see the usefulness for it, but at the same time, like, I'll say that doesn't happen. And I, yeah. we know how people play. They run off on their own. They don't stick as a team. There's a lot of issues. You're just like, okay, everyone's off on their own. Someone dies upstairs. Someone dies down. You know, Vulture's trying to stay with whoever seems useful. And at the end of the day, say he sticks right behind a Thatcher or a Thermite, you know, and they don't die. He really didn't. Uh, he may have contributed just via killing, but he wasn't necessarily. He didn't, like, every operator has their use. He didn't do anything. 
Which is fine. Yeah. I mean, that, he was, that he is, was there that is as a cushion. Which he's like, he's there as a cushion, which is fine. I mean, I don't really care. Like, if you lose him, I guess you could say, okay, well, maybe well, we have a sledge this round or something. We have an ash right. this round. And you're just like, what the fuck? And obviously, you know, if someone should swap, you know, off of Vulture, if, you know, they, yeah. they need if you someone. If you have all the essentials covered, this guy is like your backup plan. Because... Yeah. Is he he cause I, again especially with the pro leagues you know how they build like those really good teams and yeah. if like one thing falls apart then the plan kind of goes to hell. Well, the thing with the pro the pro leagues are kind of more difficult because the pro leagues the way the players are they 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 always pick characters that set up quick and that's it. You don't need to set up anything after like Jaeger's devices are down, Castle's gadgets are down, Rook's armor's down. They don't pick... hashtag longest video in the series. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I don't know. It's a good conversation, but yeah. you know. Um, like Vulture, so, guys, Vulture, but Vulture, yeah. I, he'd be interesting, I see. Yeah. So, guys, feel free to discuss any any of these ideas in the comments section. Of please, please do it in their own video, so that way things don't get hectic. Like, we've got comments for the EKAM video in the yeah. Irish video. Oh, keep it, keep it in the same video comments. Yeah. I will, so. Yeah, yeah, that was weird. I remember getting like a video about like the people commenting like the EKAM on like different videos. Like, you know, I still get the notifications there. It's all right. Don't worry. Thank you guys so much for watching. Yep. And Hang thank on, you really, really quick, oh really, God. really quick. One last thing. One last thing. <laughs> Little mini shout out to West HD ninety nine who would not shut up about us doing the Indians. <laughs> I heard, I heard from him every day for like two weeks. I'm like, dude, chill out. <laughs> Just, we'll, we'll get to it eventually. And better, and better yet, half the time it was during Operator Week. I'm like, dude, vote every yeah, every that, day, that's... vote. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Anyways, uh, Wes, thank you for continuing your support. We hope you hope enjoy, you enjoy them. We en hope you enjoyed today's NSG video. Without further ado, I'm the Danish Moose. Thank you so much to Thunderspear once again, and we'll see you, <laughs> sexy beast, in the next episode. Peace. Peace.